The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the podcast belong solely to the hosts and not the hosts' past, present, or future employers. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Brian, Mr. Betcher, and Miss Berlin for Breaking Down Scary. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Uh, Miss Berlin, uh, so so for those of you who have been listening to the show, uh, we just had our first part of our, of our interview with Alyssa uh, Miller and April Wright. And we realized it was going to be like a three-parter because it was like an hour and 45 minutes long or something. And I was like, yeah, we may want to break that up a little bit. So uh, if you're wondering where part two of that was, it'll be next week. And then part three will be the week after that. So we just wanted to break it up a little bit because, you know, we, we wanted to, um, you know, see Miss Berlin, Mr. Betcher. Miss um, Berlin wasn't here the week we recorded that. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we got to, we got to do some FaceTime with Ms. Berlin. So yeah. How, how you been Ms. Berlin? Fantastic. I was, on, I was sleeping on a world war II submarine the last time we recorded. You know what? Oh yeah. Stick, stick with that story. That's a great story. They don't have great. Days. They don't have great reception. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's a big giant metal tube. that's full of <laughs> people. It's full of people. It, yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it was a, it was a Cub Scout thing. Oh, right? see, I thought so, it was some kind of weird bed and breakfast thing that you and your No, your and person... it was okay. uncomfortable and cold, but not claustrophobic. So okay. that's what I was worried about. I thought, I thought originally, uh, when it, when we like scheduled, like, oh, I'll be able to podcast because I'm definitely going to end up in a hotel. <laughs> 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 There's no way I'm sleeping in the submarine. Um, but surprisingly roomy. Okay. Were you on like a cot or it was a hammock or something? A cot. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure like it was the half inch foam from the 1940s. Like I don't, I don't know that they've ever been replaced. Definitely like three high sleeping next to a decommissioned missile. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wow. Well, you know, the good thing about it is if it was World War II, you didn't have to worry about nuclear missiles, you know? No, 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 no. It was, yeah. it was all diesel. So yeah. Yeah. Diesel engine. Okay. So okay. very interesting. It had a whole museum around it. I learned a whole lot about subs. Um, yeah. See, I, I, I thought it was some kind of weird bed and breakfast and I was like, wow, you're, your man friend could have, you know, splurged a little more and gotten something right? that was a, you know, a little bit nicer. Had had, um, had, this, had some Wi-Fi at least. Yeah, maybe Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I had made the mention that uh, we, we, me and my wife, we got married on a Friday, April 1st, uh, 2005, of course, and honeymooned in Long Beach in the Queen Mary. And that was a, you know, World War II ship that's okay. docked in Long Beach. And yeah. uh yeah, it was, it was definitely made for another time. I mean, it was a luxury liner. Don't get me wrong, but it uh-huh. was definitely made for another time. Uh, we like, had luxury now isn't like luxury back then. No, 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 no mm-hmm. definitely not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It, it's almost like if you go and you go to one of those ancient palaces in Europe and you find out everybody was like five foot tall. You're yeah. Like, How in the hell did they sleep on that? And you're you realize that you just, tower, everyone was super over. short. Right. Right. I mean, right, right. I'm five something, but I mean, I'd, I'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Betcher, have you uh, been down to Galveston? I think there's a, a, a sub or something down there as well, right? Warship? Uh, I think it's an aircraft carrier, but I, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's an aircraft carrier from WW2. Okay. Right. You yeah. know, when I was a kid, you know, we went out to eat once a month, but it was to the DQ. That was luxury eating back then. Right. Went to I love nice nice steakhouse yeah <laughs> not, not, nothing wrong with that so so for those of you who are listening and you're like where's that jet engine if you can hear that that's my that's my laptop i've been putting it through its paces this week uh in the last what two weeks uh, i have had to change video editing software uh to video pad which actually is good the website nch's website looks kind of janky but the software video pads actually really good uh, and much faster than open web shot, which is what I was using before it would actually take about an hour to render an hour worth of video. Uh, 
Libsyn has changed their UI. So, you know, my workflows have completely been blown to hell. And, uh, you know, I've been working with a, a person by the name of Wimmery, and uh, they've been creating some content for us on our, our YouTube. So I've been doing a lot of video editing. Uh, I've also been looking at uh, virtual avatars for a, uh, a Twitch stream that, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm researching on how to do. So um, my, my poor computer, well, poor, it's like three months old, but um, has been put it through its paces and is, uh, has been beat up a little bit. So um, it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> I will never buy a second graphics card and a laptop ever again, because it doesn't oh. need a reason to start sound like a jet engine. The, the NVIDIA chip uh, that is in the, in my, the laptop. And I'm my not Mac, exactly sure. My Mac sounds hurt. like a jet engine anytime I open up Chrome. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, it'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tweet deck, you leave it on too long and it does Oof. that too. So, Oof. yeah. Um, all right. Isn't so, Chrome bigger than Windows 98 now? Probably, I mean, as especially as with as all the tabs I have open, I'm sure. Memory and. Well, it was like it was like five years ago or something. I thought somebody had posted a, an article on how to run Windows 95 inside a browser tab in JavaScript or something like that. So um, you, could, you could run an entire OS inside of a browser tab. Um, I'll have to find that link. Not I know, surprised. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it used to run on what floppy disks. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, just be able to boot it up on a floppy or, you know, something like that. So, well, several floppies, right? Right. Several floppies. Yeah. Yeah. You did. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Butcher. You had a fancy, you know, 20 gig hard drive. Not like, you know, <laughs> not like us poor folk who had to you know, use five uh, and a half or something. 13 gig, 13 Ooh, gig. I easy, remember. Easy. Yeah. Very that nice. was a uh, legit. Impressive. Wow. Yeah, very nice. Anyway, so uh, to break up to break up the the interviews, uh, we are going to do a little news this week. Uh, for those of you uh, living under a uh, rock, there's a little thing going on over in in Russia, and we don't do a lot of geopolitical stuff. But this one was kind of interesting, uh, Mr. Betcher. Uh, I, I heard this one actually a little bit on Risky Business, but um, there's been a few updates on this. The the Belarus railways have been hacked. Uh, and according to the Wired article, this marks the first time for ransomware. Mr. Betcher, why is it? Why, why is a hack on a railway a first for ransomware? Um, a first what? Let me yeah. let me uh, refresh my memory here. I think it, I think it was the first time they saw it politically motivated. The first time a non-state actor deployed ransomware purely for political objectives. Okay. So you, okay. Uh, this, this has to do well, well, what they call hacktivism, right? So a hacktivist will hack for political reasons, right? Um, right. And they're not demanding money. Uh, in this case, they demand you know, uh, non-transport of certain troops, uh, release of political right. prisoners, <clears throat> or so-called political prisoners. Now, mm -hmm. I was looking through several articles uh, about this particular hack, and Wired was the one that said in the article that the political prisoners were released, but Reuters and The Guardian and several others never mentioned that. So I'm not sure hmm. that that's true uh, right. because it's only coming from one source. But, um, but yeah, I just, um, you know, I, we haven't talked about hacktivism that much on yeah. this show over the years. Um, would Julian Assange be considered a hacktivist? Um, because he, I, I guess, purports to be anti-government or, I don't know, freedom-related uh, hacking uh, or right. anti-government hacking. Uh, I, I guess a person could be considered a hacktivist for any number of reasons, uh, as long as they don't, I guess, hack for money or yeah. well, any of that it's, sort of thing. Or not point only of money, I guess. Right. His yeah. point of view, right? One person's hacktivist is another person's, you know, insurgent or terrorist or, you know, yeah. uh, bad actor or know? freedom fighter or whatever, whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it is political. And that's by definition what a hacktivist right. is. Right. And and you said ransomware. Uh, in this case, they they encrypted and they have screenshots. They, according to this, they have screenshots of the back end systems. 
Uh, they claim to have encrypted the network with malware, which they could uh, provide the decryption keys if Belarus uh, government met a list of demands. <clears throat> and like you said, 50 political prisoners detained in the you know, midst of countries protests, as well as a commitment from Belarusian railways to not transport Russian troops and uh, potentially material, uh, you know, to, to Ukraine. So, uh, you know, they're, they're I, I don't want to say the Ukrainians did it, but you know they're obviously doing it for the Ukrainians' best interests uh, in this case. Um, I also um, kind of wonder. So, like, it was was it there? I, I guess it's because it says corporate and government IT systems, right? Is what they just right. did. So, right, like, right. say like, you know, you're Amtrak, <laughs> right? Yeah. And South Korea goes after Amtrak and they're like, oh, yeah, like we're going to take down your ability to sell tickets. They'd be like, oh, well, we need you to. OK, U.S. government, can you release these political prisoners? They're going to be like. Well, uh... see, that that's a huge there's a huge <laughs> difference there. One, people in Belarus actually use their train system. Fair. The is not fair. Uh, OK. All know, right. Um you know, I, I have seen the air track trains run. I have not yet seen anybody actually get off of them here. Uh, in, in hey, this. hey, I, I went from here to Chicago and back on an Amtrak. Well, that's like, that's like two inches on the map. It's like, I, I mean, it's the entire length of Belarus, I think. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Yeah. It's like six okay. hours. All right. I, I, and, you know, obviously people do to ride them because uh, we did have, I believe, a train accident that happened about six, seven years ago here that did, did in fact kill people. Um, yes. But they, they, they do use them. It's just it's, they're not fast. The only trains they're, I've ever taken are in Europe. And they're not the fast. They're not cheap. No, no. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I, you know, I took the TGV when we uh, visited Geneva six years ago, I think, six, mm -hmm. seven years ago. Uh, and, you know, the TGV from uh, Gare du Nord uh, in Paris all the way to Geneva took like 90 minutes. And then we took another train uh, from, uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, it was, it was one of the other train stations in, in Paris down to Bordeaux. And it was great. It was, it was very nice. It, it, you know, it wasn't first class, but, uh, you know, not plenty of leg room. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, 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 Anyway, to get back to our story, they said that the hackers did not attack control systems or anything that might damage or cause derailments or automation systems. Um, <clears throat> I think the bigger thing is, what exactly did they do? You know, um, uh, when I was listening to Risky Business, they said it sounded like all they did was make it impossible for people to buy tickets. And at that point, it's like, okay, so... You know, uh, at this point now they have to use money and a paper ticket or, you know, something like that. So it's a, it was a minor inconvenience uh, to, to some who were unable to use their, you know, their Euro cards or, or their Euro pass or their rail passes or, or what have you to, to, to be able to get into those things. Yeah, I think it's really hard to be a hacktivist because you're if you hack the wrong thing or you ransom the wrong thing, you're going to have a lot of people angry right um because it right. inconveniences uh, a portion of the population yeah right um, right the reuters article says the group has previously claimed responsibility for paralyzing government websites hacking the interior ministry and internal government databases and revealing the names of personal details of members of the security forces mm -hmm. so they uh I assume that they have been doing a lot more hacking in the past and this right. is just the latest one. Yep. Yeah. And you know, the other thing is about hacktivism, you, there's a fine line, isn't there? You know, if, if, if the Ukrainians are trying to do something to make it more difficult for Russia to bring in their material, their personnel, and, 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 you know, to, to make more efficient war using uh, the logistical elements of, of railway, do you want to piss off your next door neighbor who they might be traveling through, you know, once they get everything back up and make it that much easier for them to want to help Russia? Because it's like, oh, well, you know, Ukrainian hackers or hacktivists were, you know, poking on our stuff. You, do you want to breed that kind of ill will? So there's, a, it seems like with any hacktivist or hacktivism, there's a, you know, there, 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 there's a line there for some things. And like, like you said, Mr. Betcher, this is, this is new ground for some hacktivists, you know, um, <clears throat> So yeah, the, there's a, 
and it, it, it is kind of interesting. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was trying to find while we were talking here, if somebody had said they actually, you know, let those folks go, but, um, yeah, the, the drive, I think, uh, radio free, uh, radio free Europe, uh, it also mentioned the 50, the 50, uh, detainees. So, um, <clears throat> they, but I mean, we, were, we could go ahead. Oh, I was to say they weren't even, uh, formed that long ago. They are, uh, says September, 2020. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could potentially see more of this in the future if we've got people in the U.S. that, you know, we have, you know, pipelines that are being, you know, built and what have you for, uh, you know, across Canada. You know, Canada was unhappy with uh, the shutting down of pipelines. But, you know, if, if it went in the other direction, and those pipelines were being built or a nuclear power plant was being built, they might, you know, try to find ways to shut it down without, you know, causing the reactor to, to overload. Um, there's, you know, um, there, you know, there's, there's a number of different ways this could, you know, go in, in terms of, of hacktivism. So, um, the thing is, I think they have to, it only takes one mistake. Like if they decide to attack that nuclear reactor, or they decide to attack those, those things and they cause something bad to happen or an oil, oil drilling platform in, in the Gulf. And it causes some kind of issue with control systems they weren't aware of, you know, um, I don't know how many people have owner's manuals for, you know, dr drilling, you know, wells or, you know, or, or something like that. So it could actually cause more harm than good environmentally or, uh, you know, with the, the people around them. So, um, <clears throat> but, you know, let's hope, uh, let's hope they can continue poking at uh, logistics uh, areas and, you know, they, if they get caught that, you know, they go to, uh, you know, a nice gulag with windows or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Anyway, uh, let me see. Um, is there anything else on that one? These are genuine grassroots hacktivists. Uh, they, the group has rampaged through the Belarusian state, but yeah. Yeah. Well, at least, uh, you know, if they did release those people, then they, uh, you know, they, they, they didn't delete the stuff. It just sounds like they, they actually did non, non-destructive ransomware. So that's, that's, that's something that's better than, you know, what you would normally get in a ransomware. Sometimes right? they, they pay it and then they delete it. So, you know, sometimes yeah. you just like to be assholes. So, all right. Um, Miss Berlin, you had a story. You said you, uh, you wanted to talk about VMware horizon, uh, hit with cobalt strike, according to the Reddit article that I'm seeing here, MSP. Yeah. R slash MSP. Wow. Hit with cobalt strike, huh? Yeah. If you have, Wait a minute. Um, remind yeah, me you... again, that that's a, that's a tool for good, right? It is. A, it's right, an expensive tool. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, good. Let's, and and those of you. But if you're like, gonna uh, ransom a bunch of VMware servers, I guess you know you can right. pay for your Cobalt Strike license. <laughs> right. Well, um, this may be some of the stuff that got leaked a couple of years ago. Um, you know, so once it's been leaked, it's no longer good um, in this case. So, um, UK National Health Service uh, were actively targeting Log4 shell vulnerabilities and VMware Horizon servers. Now, Horizon servers; those are the ones that are what like remote access to your VMs and they're exposed to the internet? Well, you shouldn't have them directly supposed to exposed to the internet though. Oh, well, okay. So, but there, there, there were some that were improperly configured. Uh, a lot, or... a lot of them are improperly. And, and just, there is, there is a handful of uh, IP addresses just spraying the entire internet because they found they were listening on, on that same, uh, port is it a specific port and it's like a command of, yeah like uh it was calling okay. back for to like this 185 ip address um and mm -hmm. just doing like this uh it was like a dot net download string oh. like i see that in PowerShell a lot um yeah it's a yeah, iex new object it's going yeah. to http system.net.web client download string and then yeah a 185 address on a yeah. port 8080 interesting okay yeah so it's i mean it's still log forge related right right um, right but i mean right. they have a patch for them but you should still <clears throat> not have not have that uh, horizon server on directly exposed to the internet <laughs> yeah so yep. I just learned about this Reddit uh, MSP. So um, yeah. obviously, Miss Berlin, you you work at an MSP. So this is a is this a good Reddit for like Threat Intel or something like that potentially? Well, we I'm sorry, you're not an MSP. Anymore. No, not no, we're not technically MSPs, but we do have a lot of MSPs that are our clients. Okay, okay. So we're 
we're doing the whole like not for resale thing for MSPs right now. Right. Um, but yeah, um, it's we've seen it hit a couple times. <laughs> So, so is it normal for a server that is running, you know, is it, is it normal for a server that should be running those commands? Cause it seems like that would be something no. you would say, if I see something running an IEX command or running PowerShell or, or what have you, um, maybe I should flag that. Yes. A lot of people don't log that though. Okay. So the ignorant PM in me asks, why not? Um, they don't know to a lot of times, right? Like first right. off, the first thing, the first thing most people send you for logs is what, like firewalls, IPS. Okay. Sparse Windows okay. logs. <laughs> right, right. Those are the top right. three. Sometimes like right. end, endpoint EDR stuff. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but this kind wow. of stuff, like it's, it's, it's real bad. Like you should not have just random download command and curl curl like callbacks to random IP addresses from one of your infrastructure yeah. servers. I wonder how many people didn't realize VMware uses Tomcat, which uses Java, which uses log4j. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean that's that's that thing we talked about with with Alyssa and them. It's like log4j is like four or five dependency levels yeah. deep. So how would you yeah. even know unless you're like Oh yeah, you know it does this, which does this, which runs Java, which sure. you know, probably has log4j in it. Yeah, I don't, and I, I think that's one of the reasons, like, why this is on like the MSP channel, is because a lot of MSPs, like their customers, have no idea. Right. right. That's why they that's why you hire an MSP. You're like, right. here, handle my VMware for me. They have, you know, an MSP do that. They have another MSP handle their firewall logs, or maybe they do just their fi firewall configuration, and maybe, or maybe they do the firewall themselves because they can't. They just don't know how to do the server side. Yeah. They're like, they just don't handle the traffic right. Another thing so. that would catch this would be like a static code analysis tool, right? So you would run that scan on your code, and it would you know, with an update for log4j, it would pick that up right away and tell you exactly where it was. Yeah. So then you would right. update that and then deploy. Right. So, so I'm reading the mitigation steps at the bottom. It says, should you discover a web shell, VMware recommends that you, quote, take down the system and engage an incident response team to fully yes. assess the compromise. Okay. Yes. Um, so, so, Horizon is a way for people to gain access to VMs remotely. Taking down the VMware Horizon server would not make it possible for you to work remotely anymore. What if what if companies are using this as their their VPN of choice or their their way of remotely managing these things? It's that something first, we should be concerned I mean, about. Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah, you'd have to have a backup. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, then, hunt, you know. like hunt, like it says. Alternatively, <laughs> Huntress recommends you restore from a backup prior to December twenty fifth to remove the web shell, or I'm sure, I'm you sure may hopefully them. you didn't have web shells prior to December twenty fifth when it was in, when it was uh, when it was introduced. Oh, that web shell that's completely different. Don't worry about that's that. That's a different. One. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's that one's that story. one's completely all right. Yeah, don't worry about that one. Yeah. <laughs> now that's the Russian folks. We know about them. They're yeah, 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 right. That, that's our MSP. That, mm -hmm. which is also the, you know, well, yeah. Prior to December 25th, that's a long ass time ago. That's a month. I mean, how much information or data are you going to lose by, you know, restoring? Well, or that's you could put in um, complete <clears throat> egress filtering. That way they couldn't call back. No one uh, does that. <laughs> there's a lot of, we don't do that. like egress filtering and backups. No, you know, I'm, or you I'm, could I'm also like, implement zero trust. <laughs> <laughs> You make me sad. Sorry, sorry. Me I'm... Sad. <clears throat> there's there's a lot wrong there. It's like, do we actually have backups that go back a month? Uh, do we do ingress filtering, or can we do egress filtering? Uh, you know, all of a sudden now we're putting our horizon behind a firewall, which probably has log4j on it as well. So... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing on the internet would save a lot of us a lot of trouble. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I did I did mention that I had reached out to the to the devs of Log4j to go, hey, you know, you want to come on and invent or you know do something? <sighs> they haven't replied back. So I'm not surprised. Uh, <clears throat> I would love it because I think it would be, be super great, cool. It would be great insight into what they have to deal with on, on a regular basis. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so, all right. Yeah. If you have VM horizon, um, you've probably been owned, especially if it's, uh, hooked up directly to the internet. Definitely. Uh, do you, well, this is the national health service. So that's not a big deal. It's just, you know, the UK's healthcare system, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's not a big deal, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> but actually they did good on January 5th. Well, January 5th, it's now what the 30th is when we're recording this. So. I mean- as, yeah. Uh, so 16 days ago, according oh, to show, ago. Uh, well, according to Shodan, there was around 25,000 Horizon servers uh, currently internet accessible. Jesus Christ! Why? Why do people do that? Why? What? Convenience, availability. Convenience. Because they don't know any better. They didn't think this. Save was a hours. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's why I've I've I'm not quite understood. You know just plugging it in and turning it on and letting it go. Uh, you know, it, it, this is the whole opt in opt out thing for me. It's like, you should lock it down and then, you know, Oh, if you want to, you know, extend it to the internet or, you know, VMware, you know, who are selling to small company, you know, small organization, like the national health service of the UK should be going like, you know, part of the, the contract should be, you know, we're going to have a team of people come in and set this shit up for you properly so that you're not, you know, just installing it directly to the internet. Uh, you know, uh, how much, how much time and effort has been lost by them, you know, having, having this issue occur when they could have paid a consultant from VMware or, you know, a technical account manager to manage, you know, the, the configuration of this, of this system and just, just, seems like they don't think about that stuff but well it's really cool and so far so good right i mean it's been working for quite a while we haven't had any problems that that is that's a fair probably what that's probably the uh the yeah. mindset there sure right? i guess every every day you don't get hacked is one less day you have to actually do something to secure your network mm -hmm. that's right <clears throat> oh goody <sighs> well um so yeah, great. <clears throat> you know, I wonder, let me, let me go see what this one is about here. Um, okay. So do we have any more to talk about with the horizon stuff? Cause uh, the, the next story we have kind of builds upon, you know, very VM horizon. So <clears throat> leaping computer, uh, over 20,000 data center management systems were exposed to hackers. So they've researchers have found over 20,000 instances of publicly exposed data center infrastructure management software monitors, devices, HVAC and power distribution units, which could be used for a range of catastrophic attacks. Good. -y. More stuff that's exposed to the internet for some unknown reason. So uh, let me see what they say. <clears throat> investigators at Cybel have found over 20,000 instances of DCIM. Yeah. Uh, the analysts were able to extract passwords from dashboards, which they then used to access actual database instances and stored on the data center. Looks like a bunch of SQL, Microsoft SQL boxes got popped. Um, Ooh. wow. So just because yeah. of their all, all of their like ILL stuff. Yeah. This one, uh, Sunburn I mean, DC track. Okay. I, I mean, I remember working with like the HP ILO stuff and it being right. yep. a pain to configure. Like trying to reset a password on that was a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, I worked in a lab that had a lot of ILO stuff in it as well. Uh, ILOM, ILOM, ALOM whatever, automated yeah, lights right. out management. Right. Um, they were great. Nice little card you put inside of a server, runs on a management switch. You can SSH to it to power on and off boxes. And then uh, you found out, oh, you can SSH to that card and then, you know, map network drives to, you know, be able to do fun things. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. <clears throat> of course, you know, we were in a lab. It wasn't operationally significant and we definitely were not connected to the internet at large. I think we were behind about 15 different firewalls before we could even get to that point. So, right. Um, and the article says in most cases, not some cases, but in most the applications use default passwords. Not surprised. Well, not hundred percent then bully. Yay. We're not 100% compliant for default passwords. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm hoping that a lot of companies that get hit by this stuff think about, you know, what the future looks like for their contracts and either, you know, suggest people come in to help them, you know, do this correctly. You know, um, one of the, I've had to, I've had to eat a little bit of humble pie recently. Cause you know, I used to be the person on internet, Twitter, dog in, you know, the Cisco's of the world when they, you know, ship something with default creds or whatever. It's hard for security people inside of big companies. It really is fucking hard. And, you know, there's a lot of security people like, don't do that. And then it's like, why did you do that? You know, or, or something like that. And, you know, there's just, there, there's a lot of stuff that they have to deal with. So um, I, I am definitely eating some humble pie because I'm having to go through some of those things uh, where we, where we come up with, you know, why did you decide to do that? Why are, you know, you know we're, you're supposed to do an automated and a manual code review. Well, what's your manual code review? Oh, I run it through Fortify. Oh, great. Okay. Um, that's not a manual code review. Oh, well, I don't have time to do a full manual code review. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <clears throat> Fun process, times. Because the automated process code is review, a huge struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Let Pro- me tell yeah. you. Yeah. Software release process is hard. It doesn't uh, matter yeah. what size of company you are. Right. Right. Um, you know, and, and, you know, to be fair, I'm glad that they're doing some kind of review at all. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure there's companies out there go like, yeah, we, we just kind of check mark that. We just right. Like, you know, oh yeah. I'm uh, sure. We'll, we'll get to that later. That's, that's the OPP. That's other people's problems. So um, we'll, we'll work through that. So, but yeah, it just, it just, it just kills me that, you know, that the, the, I'm sure these companies, these 20,000 ILO interfaces being exposed, some security, some poor security bastards out there uh, dealing with trying to secure those things because now their management's like, oh shit, we've just been blown up on the internet um, and having to, you know, spend their weekend, you know, locking down all these ILO things and, and writing up reports on, you know, how we could have done it better or should have done it better. And, you know, the security person saying, uh, I told you to do it like this and you didn't want to do it like that because you need to be able to do it when you're on your Barco lounger watching, you know, Man United play Liverpool or, you know, whatever. So yeah, there's a, well, yeah. Um, no one ever listens after the fact, right. Right. It, right. It's, it's probably like, well, you should have done a better job trying to convince me that this was a problem. So it's your fault. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's one of those, one of those interesting conundrums that people have, uh, you know? Yep. Um, yep. Um, anything else before we go talking about that one? I mean, seems like a lot of our, a lot of our discussion this week was things exposed to the internet got, got Just popped. stop it. <laughs> <laughs> stop <laughs> putting things on the internet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's so easy though, and I get it, but mm-hmm. it's, yeah. I mean, just just having a, a layer of something to like like we had uh, McDouglas on, yeah, the egress traffic, Mister Betcher. If we just you know looked at what we were you know sending out, that might actually might. Oh, WAF would help. be great. Like put a WAF in front of things. Yeah, yeah except anything. you know when WAFs run log four. Literally days, anything. So. Well, right. Oh my god. So- yeah. I, you know yeah yeah i like what he said it's like a poor man's um rdp Mm -hmm. or it's indistinguishable (laughs) yeah between log 4j hack and an rdp yep yeah yeah you know that uh, the the horizon thing runs on port 8080 they could have pushed that over a 443 connection using a let's encrypt thing and nobody would have known anything it would look like legitimate 443 traffic you know, unless you knew what IP address that was coming from, you would, you would be, you know, messed up. And, you know, this won't be the last time we see the management system stuff. I mean, solar winds was all over the place. There was actually a story I think about solar winds that came up just recently too. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think we're at the bottom of the hour, Ms. Berlin, Mr. Betcher, thank you for, for coming uh, and getting on with me here. Uh, is there anything we're doing coming up in the future that we should uh, highlight or in the next, you know, three, four weeks? Uh, Miss Berlin, I, I hear, I hear tell you're working on your new book. It's coming along. Yes. Yes. It is. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're still doing it with the original publisher, the, with the, the porcupine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just uh, second edition. So. And, and your co-author is uh, diligently helping you work on that. Yep. Okay. Awesome. 
Yep, it's going great. Very cool. Uh, when are we yeah. expecting that to come out? Uh, fall. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Fall of so, 2022? Wow. Two, two whole new, yeah, two whole new chapters. Okay. I'm okay. rewriting several others. Okay. One Very and nice. two, the, for, the one and two rewrites done, but there wasn't a whole lot to change there. That okay. was... It was like creating a security program and asset management. So not a whole lot's okay. changed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I was wondering, uh, I was wondering if, if you reread your first edition, you're like, oh, wow, you sweet. Oh, there was child. A, you... oh yeah. There's a few. Okay. There's a few. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like nice. the windows chapter, I feel a little yeah. bad just because the windows can like as much as I like, that's the one thing I'm certified in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I feel like probably probably could have done a little bit better but we're gonna have okay. a cloud chapter and a database chapter added okay very cool yeah wow uh, it's it's a shame you can't see the video of this mr betcher is doing some product placement here just reading the actual it. book <laughs> he's, just, through. he's just flipping through the table of contents you know just yeah yeah there's a whole, um, there's a whole lot of i can't remember if you had automation in here automation we have certain things about automation in there yeah. i have like you might like, want to have a whole chapter on that, oof, actually. That's a good idea. <laughs> You're giving her. I'm taking. I'm taking. I mean, I'm taking. I take requests. Like, whatever you think. Mm -hmm. Like, if you walk into a place that has zero security posture mm -hmm. slash uh, process, yeah, whatever. Right. Like, what yeah. would you want to know? Yeah, I guess uh, asset right? management, software and hardware management, uh, asset management. Yeah, especially after log four J stuff, the basics. Or solar winds or whatever. Yeah, just like the, the basics, basics of, of how to implement yeah. it. Right. Okay. Asset management is huge. Like very huge. Okay. Should be after creating a security <laughs> program, probably chapter two. Yeah, and and it is. It is actually <laughs> it is chapter two. Okay. Touche. Yeah. Because that's what I always say, like when people ask, like anytime I've interviewed, right? They're like, what's the thing like people can do to increase their security? Asset management, man. Like no one does it right. <laughs> and right. egress filtering. Yeah, and egress filtering. Yeah. There's like, how many times have any of us talked to anyone, any like customer or vent, like anyone, and you're like, all right, what devices are on your, like, all right, zero trust, right. whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. Like non-zero trust, what, what devices are on your environment? Right. Do you right. know without a doubt what, what assets you have with an IP address yep. on your environment? Yeah, it's hard to do. It's hard to 5% of people say yes. Stuff. Especially you have those clouds, you know. You even, don't know. Yeah. If, even if you qualify it with, okay, you don't know how many devices ha you have on your network. Well, how many devices do you have on the internet? Right. 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 Some right. can't even answer that. Right. Like, exactly. Ah, yeah. and, how, and how many times do you have a sales department that will take their own corporate card and set up a, an EC2 instance in Amazon and not tell anybody? And then it's like, oh, now they want yeah. you to manage it because, oh, it's yep. too big and weighty and it costs $15,000 and the CFO found out about it. Yep. I, I don't want to tell you how I, I know that story. It, it comes it's a little close to home. So, All the time. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, we're, we're, we're yeah, over so sorry, our, like, our 30 minutes. No, 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 yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's cool. I, I'm, I'm just glad we were bringing it up. Uh, yeah. Ms. Berlin, how would people find you if they wanted to add things to help you uh, with your book? Uh, so at Info Sister on Twitter, I-N-F-O-S-Y-S-T-I-R. And then at Hackers Health for the mental health hackers. And we'll actually be at several things. We're going to go to B-Sides Huntsville in Alabama. Oh. We will cool. be When's at that? March 4th and 5th. Okay. We will be at B-Sides Charm, which is in Baltimore, April 29th to May 1st. Okay. Uh, and that's it for, oh, Colonel Con. Okay. Uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, April 1st and 2nd. I won't be there myself. And then yeah. B-Sides Nashville, <laughs> which is uh, March-ish sometime. I don't know. Good Lord. Yep, whole bunch of them. You busy? I'm only going to half of them because I have other oh, things okay. during the other. Oh, cool. Other ones, okay. but yeah. Okay. And then, uh, of course, your tabletop stuff, infosec role play. Um, yep. As yep, well. Yep. So cool. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. All right, Mr. Betcher, how about you? 
tell us uh, tell us about logged MD real quick and how people can find you and, and ask you things about it yeah it's uh my project the mm-hmm. log malicious discovery tool so it helps you get the right windows logs going in your environment tests for them things like that and kind of walks you through how to how to implement uh, great windows logging and cool. that's at log-md.com nice okay yeah maybe you can use it on your vm horizon thing to uh, you know help uh, help find you know malicious uh, you know powershell things running or just having powershell running all together is something you would want to log and and let know happen so there you go Cool. All right. Um, you know, you can find me on Twitter at Brian Brake, B R Y A N B R A K E. Uh, uh, the podcast is at Brake Sec, B R A K E S E C. Uh, we have some things on our YouTube channel. Uh, one of our slackers by the name of Wimmery is creating and going through the Burp Suite Academy uh, lessons. Uh, so uh, she did a couple with us at the end uh, talking about blind SQL injections. Uh, I've actually been doing the, the video editing for that. She does it on a Twitch, which I will put in our show notes, but you can also uh, catch them like a day later. She just got her affiliate status. So we actually have to delay those being posted on our YouTube for at least 24 hours. But if you uh, are a fan of the Twitches and enjoy her streams, you can go and uh, follow along with her. She uh, watches the video and then actually does the exercise. So you can go check her out at, at Wimmery, I think on Twitter as well. And uh, yeah, we've got some uh, new content that's uh, going up on our YouTube channel. So if you're looking for blind SQL injection or user enumeration stuff, you know, she's running through those lessons and she's got some people with her that actually walk through the lessons with her. And that's pretty cool. So um, she's, she's doing a lot of great work there for us and we do appreciate her time and effort. So um, yeah, there you go. Um, Thank you to all our Patreon supporters for their support. Uh, It's our tip jar that we use for hosting zoom uh paying for zoom domain registration and uh you know uh just helps us feel you know that like we're doing something good here and that uh you know we're doing a good turn for folks so um if you you know the podcast will always be free if you can't give to the patreon you know a positive uh, review on your favorite platform of choice that you get your podcast from would be uh wouldn't go amiss and actually give us more visibility on those various platforms apple Spotify, uh, depending on, depending on how you feel about Spotify. Anyway, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, Apple podcasts, Google play, uh, Amazon. And, uh, I think we just got put on, yeah, I think we just got put on Amazon and audible. So, um, if you, uh, ha- or, or the Samsung podcast platform as well, I don't know why they have one, but they do. So please, uh, please feel free to, you know, leave a positive uh, comment on those, uh, those places. If you, if you have a have five minutes, so, All right. Well, I think that was it for breaking down security this week. Next week will be part two. And then the week after will be part three with uh, Alyssa Miller and April Wright on uh, um, talking about IoT privacy and security and uh, the anti-stalking initiatives of those platforms and and out there. So, uh, you know, keep an eye out for that. Uh, Have a great week. Kind to one another. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, you nasties. Um, get Get your shots if you can. Uh, from Stemper, Rabies, whatever, and and Omicron, of course. Uh, And uh, take care of yourselves because uh, you are the only you that you have. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye.